Welcome to Read Aloud. I've decided that since we can't leave the house, it would be a great chance for us to get lost in a book and go on an adventure. There's no one better to go on an adventure with than our very own Flat Stanley. And in this book, he's going to Canada. So for the next couple of weeks, we'll be in Canada with Flat Stanley. So the title is Flat Stanley's World Adventures. The Intrepid Can Canadian Expedition. The first chapter is called Stanley Goes Skiing. Ha ha, Arthur Lambchop crowd as he skied past his older brother Stanley. Last one to the bottom is a frozen pancake. Stanley grunted as he dug his poles into snow and strained against the frosty Canadian wind. Ever since he had awakened to find himself flattened by a bulletin board, Stanley had been putting up with Arthur's teasing about his shape. He didn't really mind. Arthur was a good brother, cheerful and loyal and a lot of fun. And so what if being flat made it nearly impossible to ski? He had some mighty big advantages. For instance, Stanley could now travel by mailing himself anywhere in the world for a fraction of the cost of airfare. And he sure had a lot of adventures that would not have been available to a rounder boy. His shape had been a big help to others, also. Stanley allowed himself a little smile of pride as he flapped another few feet down the slope. Wasn't his mother wearing a favor ring because he, he had been able to slip down into the storm drain to retrieve it, retrieve it? Wasn't Abraham Lincoln's nose still in place at Mount Rushmore because he turned himself into a human band-aid? And right now, weren't there a couple of museum sneak thieves playing poker in the city jail who are very, very sorry indeed that ever run into a boy flat enough to pose as a painting. Just then, Arthur whizzed by for a second time. See you around, he shouted. Stanley struggled harder against the wind and reminded himself even more firmly he should not feel sorry for himself. Why, already on this vacation, his flatness has been had been an advantage because he could simply bend his legs at the knees. He had not he had not needed to rent skis. With the money this had saved, the Lamb Chop family had enjoyed a hot chocolate party in the lodge the night before. Stanley paused to catch his breath. Really? So what if he wasn't aerodynamic anymore? The sun was shining on the snow capped mountains, and the air felt fresh on his cheeks. The scene spread below him was a straight out of a winter wonderland postcard. Over on the expert trail, daredevils were enjoying the jumps leaping and twisting in the air. In front of him, brightly dressed skiers swooshed by tall frosted pines. By the color of their parka, Stanley recognized a band of the kids he and Arthur had met the day before. He watched as his brother dashed down the mountain to them now. Everyone waved merrily to one another and their shouts of greeting drifted up the mountain. And there in the middle of the trail, Stanley sank, sank to the snow in defeat. He couldn't deny it anymore. Lately, his flatness had made him feel he just didn't have much in common with other people. Lately, it had made him feel lonely. Tears froze on his eyelashes. Stanley brushed them off to watch Arthur and the other kids weave in and out of each other's paths gliding gleefully down the mountains. Suddenly, shouted, suddenly though, Arthur shouted something and broke off from the group. He was heading toward the da daredevil skiers. Stanley scrambled to his feet. No, Arthur, he cried, there are jumps. Too late. Stanley watched in horror as his brother flew up in the air and then crashed in a pinwheel of, a, of skis and poles and flying gloves. Without a second thought, Stanley angled his body edgewise into the wind. Like the blade of a knife, he ripped down the mountain at a terrifying speed, and within seconds, he was at his brother's side. Are you all right? Stanley asked. He offered Arthur his hand to help him up. Just then, a boy about Stanley's age skidded to a stop in a spray of snow. Don't try to move him, he warned. He may have a broken bone. I'll go get my father. He's a doctor. He's on ski patrol today. And then, just as suddenly, the boy took off his snowboard again. Stan Stanley bent down beside his brother. Does it hurt awfully, he asked. Do you want me to get mom and dad? Arthur shook his head. Just stay here with me until the fellow's father comes, all right? 
Of course, Stanley promised. I won't leave you. So there's chapter one. I'll see you all next week so we can learn more about Arthur's accident and what Stanley does. Hope you all enjoyed it.